uh, William J. Collins, Jr., Lieutenant, United States Naval Reserve. Specific instances, uh, we got into a, uh, a firefight uh, off uh, the Kamau Peninsula below the village of Sonnendok, uh, and we could see where the fire was coming from. It had uh, uh, a straw basket boat that had been beached, and they were, the VC or the, whoever they were, we never knew, had gone into the reeds. And in that period of time, they had, uh, if you got in too close, they would shoot at you. And they, they shot at us, cause, so we shot back. And, and uh, one of my, one of my uh, crew said, you know, Mr. Collins, I said, she said, you know, I think I can go in and get that straw boat and they won't be able to get off that beach. I said, well, so he, he went ashore. He got that straw boat and brought it back out and, and uh, of course they were shooting at us the whole time, but we would, he would, he swam in, he was a scuba diver to begin with. So he, he didn't have his scuba gear, but he was able to maneuver. He got the thing, brought it back out, and we were able to get through with it. Uh, of course, in those days, the rules of engagement in that part is that you didn't shoot until you were shot at, unless you were specifically offered uh, or spe specifically ordered to go provide gunfire support for an army unit or somebody on the beach. But if you were at sea on patrol and you got fired at, you, had, you could go ahead and fire back. But if you didn't get fired at first, you couldn't fire the first shot. Uh, we had another incidence where uh, a man and his son were uh, fishermen this would have been uh, off of Rock Jaw, R A C H G I A, two words. Rock Jaw, uh, they uh, flagged me, the, the father flagged me down. I'm sorry, the boy flagged me down in uh, the water. <clears throat> and uh, we went up and took him aboard, and he said this, that his father had gotten ill and that he was, uh, had fallen overboard and that the boat went that way. Well, I said, okay, we'll see if we can find it. We did find it. The father was gone, the boat was still on the way and going, and of course, there's nothing we could do about it. Uh, that was just another thing that happened. We had, uh, it was a no fishing zone for Thailand fishermen and on occasion we would feel like a, <laughs> I sometimes wondered why they, uh, we would call my Operation Market Time and the PBRs were Operation Game Warden, but it was almost like we were a game warden out there because here comes these Thailand fishermen. And so we were boarding and searching the Thai vessels and uh, I had a, uh, one of the blades on my uh, screw on, on my boat broke. Well, you know, you can imagine the vibration that created. So. We wound up steaming back to Antoy about 40 miles on one engine uh, because you couldn't run two. Uh, that's just another thing. Uh, but the, uh, sometimes the firefights you got involved in, you didn't remember much about them until you, uh, because you would sit down and write about them at night. And if you, if you didn't write it down quickly, you, you couldn't remember because it would just become a cloud. Uh, and sometimes you didn't think about it uh, at all because it was just an incident in your day. Uh, you remember the more humorous ones than you do the less so. I had a, a I told a story last night, I had a Life Magazine photographer on board uh, one time. You know, that was one of the things that we did you know, as well as entertain television stars, some of whom I never even heard of because I'd been in the Navy and I didn't watch television back in Norfolk, Virginia. So, but this Life Magazine photographer was on board and we started taking fire from the beach uh, below uh, Queen, you know, below uh, Ha Tien, which Ha Tien was a town on the Cambodian border. And uh, we had been asked to go uh, down and assist a U.S. Army unit uh, who was under fire. So we went south about five, six miles below the Hatien and uh, 
the Vietnamese uh, communists used uh, 51 caliber machine guns. We used 50 caliber. We always said that that was because they could take a 50 caliber U.S. round and stick it in a 51 and would still shoot. Uh, but nevertheless, we got there and they took us under fire and we were far enough off the beach so that we weren't in immediate danger. And then uh, this Life magazine yeah. photographer said, uh, what's all those splashes in the water? And somebody, wasn't me, somebody told him, he said, that's gunfire. And uh, he said, well, you know, I don't hear the guns. Y'all are not shooting. And he said, no, they're shooting at us. <laughs> and he, he turned white as a sheep. We uh, wound up opening up the uh, hatch cover to the engines, and he got down between the engines to keep from being shot. <laughs> so that's just another humorous story. But 